Goodbye, Denver. Got Tom driving us to the airport, and it's bumper to bumper. All right, here at DIA, thanks, Tom. Tom's our neighbor across the street. Brought us in this SUV, this big old Mercedes. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Tom. Tom. And my rates are very cheap. Yeah. Cheap rates. <laughs> our cycling trip to France started out the way all great adventures begin, slogging all of our stuff to the airport. All right, we're here at Denver International Airport. We got here bright and early to get our bikes checked, made sure that we didn't have any issues. But of course, the flight's delayed about two hours. Man, is it boring. It's been a weird beginning to the trip. Juliana's been taking care of a cousin. Uh, I came down with an infection and I'm dealing with the antibiotics. So neither of us have trained at all. We haven't been riding at all. It's just like last year when we were crossing the country. We just didn't really have any chance to get any training in, and we start out these trips probably in the worst shape of our lives. <laughs> and we end up in the best. <laughs> yeah, we, we, end up, we just have to kind of work our way up, and that's kind of the way we do it. And I guess the lesson here is, if we can do it, I mean, anybody, anybody can do it. Can. <laughs> Report any unattended bags and suspicious behavior to the nearest airport employee. Law enforcement She's She's is in about 16 hours, so, uh, so, happy trails. Here we go. There's no getting around the fact that getting to Europe involves a fair degree of mania, stress, and various complications. And did I mention discomfort? Two months in Europe, it'll be worth it. We landed in Zurich, went through the usual formalities, and managed to find an Uber big enough to take us and our bikes to Victor and Nadia's home. Well, we managed to get all of our bags into this super Prius, and we're packed to the gills. We're on our way to Nadia's. Everything is good to go. And who is Nadia? This is Nadia, Juliana's cousin. And this is Victor, Nadia's husband. They live in Zurich, and they decided to join us on the first leg of our journey. We're going to France. Yes. We're going to oh bike. There, there might, might be, be some wine had <laughs> at the end of the day. There Another might be a little bit. Un petit peu. Un petit peu really de <laughs> our plan was to begin in Nevers in the upper Loire Valley, follow the Loire Velo route to the Atlantic, down the coast on the Velada Sea, cut across to the Mediterranean on the Canal du Garonne and the Canal du Midi, along the Med to Arles, and then north along the Rhone. We called it the French Curl. Besides hanging out with Nadia and Victor, the best thing about having a home base in Zurich is Zurich. We overcame our jet lag, exploring this lovely Swiss city. Cheers. Cheers! Cheers! Right. Cheers! And we also took a quick jaunt in the car to nearby Germany in the town of Constance, where we whetted our appetites for all things European. But we also had some work to do. Putting our bikes back together was no small feat, and it took a couple of visits to a bike shop in Zurich to get everything working properly. Well, we finally got the bikes put together. It took us most of the day. I always have this problem with my handlebar stem. It's got an extender. I have to take it into the bike store every time I rebuild it. So we did that. We went down into Zurich and found a bike store that did it for pretty much free. It's very, very generous about it. Finally got everything set up. Victor and Nadia's bikes are all set up and we're ready to start doing some test rides tomorrow. Taking our first test ride. Gonna do a little little ride along Lake Zurich and just kind of checking to see if all the bike stuff is all put together right. Otherwise, just enjoying a beautiful day. How's it going back there, Victor? Well, let's go to the left, to the right. We finally put our feet to the pedals, brimming with anticipation for the adventure through France that awaited us. 
but for now, just enjoying the foothills of the Swiss Alps and the calm waters of Lake Zurich. Always fun when you go on faster than the traffic. Always a good time. <laughs> Riding through Altstadt in the Wittersville, Wittersville, Dillersville. I don't know the name of this town. Can we walk it through? I think we have to, but I'm going to check. The Swiss just have one of the best bicycle systems I've ever seen. There's just signs everywhere, trails everywhere, great bike paths. It's just an amazing place to ride. Great place to fill up a water bottle, huh? Sure is. Look at this. Ice cold it's all water. for us. Just so that we can have nice cold water. You see the Alps beautifully today. Um, some days, really right here, they look like they're on top of you. And there's snow covered. It's just We rode south along the lake and enjoyed a glass of wine and a glorious sunset over the water before returning to Victor and Nadia's home for the night. Early tomorrow morning, we get on the train and begin our adventure through France. Our starting point was Nevers on the upper Loire River, and it took several trains to get us there. Now there are those who will tell you that riding with bikes on European trains is a breeze. But with fully loaded touring bikes, I'm here to tell you it's not. <laughs> But we made it to Nevers and to our hotel, where, hot, sticky, and wet from the rain, we crowded onto a hotel elevator and found ourselves promptly stuck. J'entends pas ce que vous dites. Stuck in the elevator. Don't even think about it. <laughs> We're just loaded and this kind gentleman came down to meet us. And now, the elevator's not working and we're stuck! <laughs> oui, bonjour, je suis au 20 avenue Pierre Lérigovois, bloqué dans un ascenseur entre le moins 1 et 0. On est 5 actuellement. <laughs> J'entends pas ce que vous dites. I've seen movies like this. Hello. But of course we were rescued, in time for our first of many delectable French meals and an explore around the town. We stumbled onto the Cathedral of Nevers, a massive and glorious Romanesque and Gothic structure, constructed in the 10th century, modified in the 16th, Anybody for a little confession? Tomorrow, we finally begin our ride on the Loire. First view of the Loire, the bridge. What do you have in store for us?
finally on our way wandering around the town trying to find the Loire trail just getting over some of those initial bumps and kinks that you have it's a beautiful day of riding but uh, trying to find this trail is a complete cluster everyone's got a different idea of where it is maybe we'll get there by the end of the day Herman on the Loire Juliana doing a little touch up on Victor's seat hopefully making that a little bit more comfortable hot and humid and we're just struggling trying to find this route but I think we might have found something on Canute that's going to get us going I'm leaving Nevear and uh, hoping that we can get some miles behind us it's been a frustrating start so let's hope for the best yep. <laughs> finally after so much work after so much frustration getting out of town and getting on the right route yeah. we're in that beautiful European trail, it's nice and smooth, it's paved, it's gorgeous. So we're not following the Loire River right now, we're following a canal that uh, parallels the Loire. Still struggling a little bit trying to find our routes, but uh, I think we're getting there, slowly but surely. Shut up. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. When's the last time we said those phrases together, huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's another day on the road, the first day on the road since uh, Kittery, Maine. Right. Yeah, this is a, a canal along the Loire. Very European, very French, very green, even though we're in a drought and freaking gorgeous. Now we're on an aqueduct which carries the canal over the River Loire. Nice. Our first, first day on the Loire. Stopping for lunch. It's been a good day so far. A rough start, but a great day. Some beautiful people. So happy to be with them. I saw that job. They wanted someone that spoke Hey, baby. Hey, baby. How you doing? Oh, having the time of my life. We are living large. This is what it looks like. Can't put a price tag on that. Only an airplane ticket. They say the Loire might be kind of windy, and it sure is. We're, uh, I don't know, we're probably dealing with 15 mile hour wind, something like that. Nothing too extreme, but enough to add a little climb or the feeling of a climb to this otherwise very, very level path. So last summer we were crossing the American West during the height of wildfire season. This year we're going around France. Not only is it wildfire season, but it's also a drought. You can see the Loire. A lot of exposed sand banks, very, very low water. And the sky does seem to have that old yellow haze. There are fires down in Bordeaux, I understand. Yeah global warming. It's uh, just part of our reality. Everywhere we go, you just can't outrun it. You can't hide from it. It's everywhere you go these days. Just like they said it was going to be. That trail just seems to go straight forever, you know? It does. Finally see a bend here, but behind us it's just been a straight, straight shot. And flat. And very flat. And it's hot too, almost 90 degrees, riding along the levee. Oh, there's a bend, and now we got straight again for another mile or two. Fly away, little seagull, fly away. Or whatever you are. Pretty town. So we're not going to make it all the way into Saint-Cyr, which is what our ultimate destination was for the day. But we're going somewhere instead, I believe Pouleur on the Loire. And after a rough start with uh, confusingly marked trails, the trail has been really, really clear and very easy to follow. We downloaded something from Kamut, an existing route that should take us all the way to the ocean if we choose to go that far, and has been pretty much rock solid as far as guiding us along the way. It's been a great ride since then. The Loire. Dry, dry, dry. 
So we booked into our Airbnb uh, in Puy sur le Loire. The only problem was that there was no restaurants within walking distance. All the restaurants that were close by were closed. So the owner um, offered to drive us to this place about uh, four miles away. So we're gonna have a delightful meal here. Yes, we're gonna we have burned a it. Meal. And we just hope that we can get a ride home because uh, it's late. A little easier than the bear. Once we found our path, it was easy to follow all the way to the ocean, with very few complications, which is not to say there weren't many distractions. Oh, hey, little baby. Well, just so you know, I think you guys are very beautiful, and maybe someday I'll be vegetarian again. I could, I could do with never eating. The destination for today was Sancerre, a hill town overlooking the Loire, and that meant climbing. Oh, it's a piece of cake, you guys. <laughs> Love that aqueduct. God, that's gorgeous. Technically not an aqueduct, but a train bridge built in the late 19th century. Sancerre is a medieval village located on a high rise above the Loire. Founded in the 11th century, although there's evidence that the area was originally settled by the Romans. It has a fascinating and colorful history. Charging up the uh, hill to get to Sancerre, a hill town overlooking the Loire. Beautiful views along the way, although we're pretty focused on pedaling. Testing our climbing abilities in a big way right now. I don't know if you can see how steep that hill is. I don't know how steep it is, but it's good and steep. Everyone's holding their line though, it's good. The land that surrounds the town is famous for its wine, specifically Sauvignon Blanc, although originally the region was famous for reds until devastated by a blight in the late 1800s. Cheers. The second day in Sancerre, the rain finally came. And the rain came. It didn't rain all day, but you know. But we got a little rain. And it's happening now. Look at that view out our dining room. Is that lovely or what? Wow. Gorgeous. We spent an extra day in Sancerre, thoroughly enjoying this fabulous town with its tumbling houses and serpentine streets. Along the way we discovered a mysterious monument of sorts, a well into which a mayor of the town had been thrown into if I'm not mistaken. Just one more thing that made our visit to Sancerre a little more special. Bonjour.